Negative interest rates were considered to be fictional only a couple years ago. They went from a completely unrealistic possibility, later to an unlikely event, then to the next option should it be deemed necessary, and soon we'll see it becoming the policy of choice for central banks everywhere. A slow acclimation to accepting this destructive, suicidal banker policy. This causes a massive distortion while markets no longer become focused on productivity and real events. They become all about fraudulent methods of propping up the financial system. Reality has left the building, ladies and gentlemen. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Let's get into Japan getting paid to borrow money. And I'm talking about negative interest rates here today. Of course, Japan being at the forefront of this now, and they are going to continue to pursue this policy. Let's begin with this. Japan actually getting paid to borrow for 10 years as yields below zero. Japan selling its 10-year bonds. Let's look at this. The Japanese government got paid to borrow money for a decade for the first time, selling 2.2 trillion yen of the debt at an average yield of minus 0.024%. Of course, it's a very small number, but it sets the precedent that you can go in to negative territory. The sale drew bids for 3.2 times the amount of the securities offer, the first increase in demand since an auction in December, according to the finance ministry. So they actually were successful in this auction here. Doesn't surprise me because anybody will take anything. And these are the central banks and other investment banks. They'll take anything they can get at this point because it's all a bunch of gar garbage. Which pile do you want to take it from? There's more in here. I'll just cover it very quickly. Japanese government bonds of as long as five years in maturity sold at an average yield of below zero for the first time last month after the Bank of Japan pushed yields lower across the curve with the announcements of negative interest rates on January 29th. Do you think for a second that this is going to be the last time that you hear of a country entering negative interest rates? Do you think that this is the last time that Japan will enter this or basically will not go any lower? Of course, we're going to have lower and lower interest rates all as a result of a failed policy to begin with. There's a chart down below. I'm not going to get to it. I just want to move on, but it's there if you'd like to see it. Food stamps, something I've covered you know, since my book and even before that in these videos as we look at how bad the situation is. Now, we have an unemployment rate in the United States of 4.9%. So essentially, they're at full unemployment. So everything is just fine, right? Well, the number of people on food stamps remains near an all-time high, which was 47 million in 2013. Why the disparity in the numbers? Well, the unemployment rate does not take into account people who are not in or have dropped out of the workforce altogether. Thank you very much. This website just basically said exactly what I've said every single time I show this statistic. The BLS reported in January of this year that approximately 94 million Americans are not participating in the workforce. The first thing that people say when they deny it is that, look, there's always people who are not working. You have children, for example, who don't work. They don't count. But it doesn't matter when you have one third the population not working. It's a very significant number. So right here, they're saying it's hovering around the 46 million participants since June or since uh, 2011. When you have nearly 50 million people needing the government to eat, I assure you, this is a very, very serious situation. Nothing can deny that. Bloomberg Business reported that the last time unemployment rate was at 5% in April 2008, only 28 million Americans were on food stamps. So what's going on here? What is this all about? Does the unemployment rate have anything to do with the amount of people on food stamps? The answer is no. The unemployment rate 
is fiction. It was fiction in April 2008, and here in 2016, it is still fiction. It doesn't match up. However you want to look at it, the truth is that the actual rate, the amount of people who are unemployed, the amount of people who require food stamps does not correlate with the unemployment rate provided to us by the BLS. This article is out of CNN. Sorry, OPEC, the U.S. oil boom isn't dead yet. The U.S. pumped an average of 9 million barrels per day last year, according to the new government figures. That's the highest since 1972 and represents an impressive growth of 89% since 2008. So it's interesting to see what's happening out of the U.S. pumping a lot of oil particularly at this time when there is supposedly a huge glut in oil. Why? Why is this the case? I've talked about my reasons why previously. I have a video talking about Saudi Arabia, and you can point to exactly why I'm suggesting that. The crash in oil prices has caused major uh, caused production to slow in little in the a little in recent months but shale oil producers have held up far better and many had feared actually if you look around the world in fact a lot of people in the oil industries and everything connected in with it have lost their jobs so i would suggest a different story in my book this is actually part of the introduction free your mind the truth will unfold in the following pages the governments around the world are incapable of preventing crashes, fixing economic or political issues. And will anyone deny me on that? That They've never fixed anything. They just band-aid fix everything, which just breaks instantly and doesn't really fix anything, to be honest with you. Their policies always work in favor of the bankers, and the average person, person gets the short end of the stick time and time again. This is happening, and this is what led me to write the book, because quite frankly, without that very limited education that is required to understand this system the people are going to get that short end of the stick this is what we have to face every single day and we even have alan greenspan former fed chairman some of you may not agree with what he says i actually believe that other than that whole he was former fed chairman portion his actual writing is very very good i actually agree with quite a bit of what he says if you've read age of turbulence even you'll see his change over the years unfortunate during his time within the fed it was obviously he's part of the system but if you look at what he says he says some really powerful stuff i haven't been optimistic in quite a while he actually rips on the system quite a bit and he is not looking uh, to the future of China at this time, believing that they are in for quite some slowdown there, which is going to affect the global economy. He really gets into a lot here. If you have a few minutes, you want to watch this video, I do recommend it. Um, of course, it'll be in the description as always. And there's another video I watched, if you look down below, where he discusses negative interest rates, talking about how they cause these distortions. In fact, he says, sounds like the money gps he sounds like david quintieri quite a bit here in these two videos so if it's there if you are interested in the whole moral of the story here for this is that when you put negative interest rates rates in place it's going to ruin the economy when you print money it's going to ruin the economy i would even suggest not that we should do this but at the at least get into public works projects over this kind of silliness of negative interest rates and quantitative easing it makes so much more sense at least build bridges to nowhere rather than just print money and give it to bankers it's so silly the way this is working it's ruining things permanently at least building homes that nobody's going to live in for 20 50 years at least that's better than what they're doing i'm not suggesting they should do that i'm just saying at the very least it's somewhat productive perhaps later down the road that's all for this today if you found this video informative 
please give me a thumbs up. Remember that when you give me thumbs up, it helps my videos to be pushed up in the search results. And that means, in a way, you get to share the truth with others. And all you got to do is give me a thumbs up. You can also comment down below. Just comment, say thank you, say hi, say hello, say anything. Say hallelujah if you want. It just helps me to boost everything up. So I appreciate that very much. Last but not least, if you found this video informative, then I know you'll find my book, The Money GPS, even more informative. Head over to Amazon and you'll see they have this look inside feature, which will allow you to flip through the pages of the book and see if you like it. Take care.